at fireweed, also known as great willow herb. And this plant grows all the way from sea level up to alpine regions, and it varies in size depending on where you're at. We're really pretty high up here, so the plants are small, but they can grow up to six feet tall. Uh, this plant really thrives in areas that have seen wildfire or have disturbed soil. It's called fireweed because it will often be one of the first plants to colonize after a forest fire comes through. It has wind dispersed seeds and it also spreads through rhizomes, so you'll often find them growing in dense patches. In England, they refer to this plant as bombweed because after London had been bombed, you would often find fireweed growing in some of the ruins. If you're trying to identify it, it has these beautiful pink to magenta flowers. The stem is often kind of reddish and they have these narrow, thin, willow-like leaves and that's how it gets its southern name, Great Willow Herb. The leaves are usually alternate, but you can also find them growing opposite on some parts of the stem. Fireweed has really fluffy white seeds and native people in the Puget Sound region who would make mountain goat wool blankets would use the seed fluff from fireweed to extend their wool supply which is kind of cool. The Blackfoot would use the flowers, they would rub the flowers on mittens and thongs as kind of a waterproofing agent. This plant is also edible. The inner pith was eaten in the springtime and it tastes kind of cucumber-like, so it's pretty tasty. The plant was sometimes used to line root cooking pits so that you wouldn't get dirt on the food that you were cooking. Uh, French fur trappers would fix it kind of like asparagus. And Kamchatka, Russia, which is the part that extends over by Alaska, indigenous people would make it into a stupefying ale combined with cow parsnip. And in Greenland, they would combine the leaves of fireweed with seal blubber to make a tasty treat. Yum! Mm -hmm.